Okay, class, today we're in section 9.7, solve systems with quadratic equations. Solve systems with quadratic equations. Before, you solve systems of linear equations. Now you will solve systems that include a quadratic equation. You have solved systems of linear equations using the graph and check method and using the substitution method. You can now use both of these techniques to solve a system of equations involving nonlinear equations, such as quadratic equations. Recall that the substitution method consists of the following three steps. Step one, solve one of the equations for one of its variables. Step two, substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. Step three, substitute the value from step two into one of the original equations and solve. Example one, use the substitution method. Solve the system y is equal to three x plus two, that's a linear equation, and equation two, y is equal to three x squared plus six x plus two, quadratic equation. Step one, solve one of the equations for y. Equation one is already solved for y. Step two, substitute three x plus two for y in equation two and solve for x. So once again, equation one, equation two, equation one is already solved for y. So we're gonna take equation one and plug it into equation two. So in place of y, we're gonna put three x plus two. In place of y, we're going to put 3x plus 2. So now we have 3x plus 2 is equal to 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. All right, once again, we took the y here and we put it in place of the y that's on the second equation. This is the second equation. y is equal to 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. So in place of y, we're going to put that first equation because y is equal to both of these. All right, so now now we're going to subtract 3x and 2 from each side. Okay, after doing so, we end up with 3x minus 3x, that's gone. And then a positive 2 combined with a negative 2, that's also gone. So 0, 0. So we're left with just 0 right there. Then we take the 3x and we put it up under the 6x. 6x minus 3x is 3x. And we take that negative 2 and put it up under the 2. A positive 2, when added to a negative 2, it comes out to be 0, so it's gone. So we're left with 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 3x. Next, we're going to factor. We have 3x squared plus 3x. So what can be factored out between these two terms? We know we can factor out a 3, and we've got an x squared and an x, and we don't forget our rule. We choose the smallest variable. In this case, it's x. So we're going to factor out a 3x. So now what is 3x squared divided by 3x? 3 divided by 3 is 1. x squared divided by x, we're left with just x. What is 3x divided by 3x? 3 divided by 3 is 1. x divided by x is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Or you can simply say 3x divided by 3x is 1. So now we're left with 0 is equal to 3x times x plus 1. Okay, now we apply our 0 property. 3x is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. 3x is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. Well, when 3x is equal to 0, we end up with x equaling 0. Divide both sides by 3, by 3 here and 3 there. 3 divided by 3 is 1, bring your x down. 0 divided by 3 is 0, bring that down. So now we got x plus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, we want to get x by itself, so we say minus 1, minus 1. The 1's are going to cancel out, and then 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. So after we find our x values, now we go to step 3, which means we substitute both 0 and negative 1 for x in equation 1 and to solve for y. So 
we're going to get y is equal to 3 times x plus 2. Our first value was 0, so in place of x, we put 0. So y is equal to 3 times 0 plus 2. 3 times 0 is 0 plus 2. y is equal to 2. Then we get y is equal to 3 times x plus 2. Again, this time our value is a negative 1, so we put it in negative 1. So y is equal to 3 times a negative 1 plus 2. 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. And a negative 3 plus 2 is equal to a negative 1. So the solutions of our equations are, when x is 0, y is 2. And when x is a negative 1, y is also a negative 1. Points of intersections. When you graph a system of equations, the graphs intersect at each solution of the system. For a system consisting of a linear equation and a quadratic equation, the number of intersections and therefore solutions can be 0, 1, or 2. Key concept. Read for yourself and get in your notes as needed. Systems with one linear equation and one quadratic equation. There are three possibilities for the number of points of intersection. No solution. Here you see you have your linear and you have your quadratic and they never touch. So no solution. Here you have your quadratic and your linear and they intersect at one point. One solution. And here you have your quadratic and your linear and you can see that they intersect at two uh, locations or two solutions. Example two, use a graphing calculator to solve a system. Now we're going to solve these without using a graphing calculator. All right, because we now we know the steps to how to graph a linear equation and we also know how to graph a quadratic equation. All right, so what we're going to do here, we remember that uh, when graphing a linear equation, there's several techniques that we can use. Remember the form, y is equal to mx plus b. We can graph our y-intercept, then count our slope. Don't forget our slope is the rise over the run, so that's 2 over 1. So we graph the intercept, and then we graph our slope. Or we can go through and find our x-intercept and our y-intercept and plot those two points. Don't forget to find the y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. When you set x equal to 0, the y-intercept is a negative 4. To find the x-intercept, we call, uh, to find the x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0, we get 0 is equal to 2x minus 4. We want to solve for x. So plus 4 plus 4, that comes down, we get 4. 0 plus 4 is 4, and that's equal to 2x. Once again, we are solving for x. We're going to get rid of the 2. So we divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. We're left with just x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the x-intercept is 2. So that means we're going to be plotting the following points just using the, uh, the intercepts. Okay, we just determined that when x is 0, y was a negative 4. When y was 0, x was 2. So we plot these two intercepts, x-intercept, y-intercept. That's all we need to make our line. All right, now when it comes to graphing this one, we just got to working out these early in the chapter. So we know to graph this, the first thing we got to do is find our axis of symmetry, which is a negative b over 2a. After we find our axis of symmetry, then we find our vertex. We take whatever value we came out with for the axis of, uh, of symmetry, and we plug that in for x and find our y value. Now we have the x value and the y value. That's our vertex. From there, we pick any two points lower than the value of the x value of the vertex. We plot our graphs, and then we see where they intersect. Solving equations. You can use a graph to solve an equation in one variable. Treat each side of the equation as a function. Then graph each function on the same coordinate plane. The x values, the x value of any points of intersection will be the solution of the equation. Example 3. Solve an equation using a system. 
Solve the equation negative x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to negative 2x minus 1 using a system of equations. Check your solutions. Step 1. Write a system of two equations by setting both the left and right sides of the given equation equal, each equal to y. So, negative x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to a negative 2x minus 1 becomes y is equal to a negative x squared minus 4x plus 2, equation 1, and equation 2, y is equal to a negative 2x minus 1. Okay, first you would graph the, or at least I would, I would graph the linear equation first. My y-intercept is a negative 1. My slope is a negative 2. Then I would graph my quadratic equation, realizing that I must figure out the axis of symmetry first, using negative b over 2a. Whatever value I come up with for x, I plug it back into the equation. After doing that, I then have my vertex because I have my x value and my y value. After that, I pick two points that are lower than the x value of the vertex. After plotting, I check and see if they intersect. And in this case, when I get through plotting, the solutions of the equation should be x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to a negative 1. As you can see right here from the graph, you see where they intersect at two points here and here. All right, when you get finished on your graph, you should have the same answers. Example four, solve a multi-step problem. Baseball. During practice, you hit a baseball toward the gym, which is 240 feet away. The path of the baseball after it is hit can be modeled by the equation y is equal to a negative 0 0.004 times x squared plus x plus 3. The roof of the gym can be modeled by the equation y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 120 for values of x greater than 240 and less than 320. The wall of the gym can be modeled by the equation x is equal to 240 for values of y between 0 feet and 40 feet. Does the baseball hit the roof of the gym? Okay, now notice that this equation is quadratic. And, and it opens downward because it's negative, but it's following the flight of a baseball after it's been hit. Notice here we're talking about the, the gym, the roof of the gym. Notice how the roof of the gym can be linear, right? Could be this way, that way, whatever the case may be. And then notice the wall itself is vertical at x is equal to 240, also linear. Solution. Step 1. Write a system of two equations for the baseball and the roof. y is equal to a negative 0 0.004 times x squared plus x plus 3. And for the roof, y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 120. Graph both equations on the same coordinate plane. Okay, now notice the ball's path, the wall, and the roof. Ball's path, or the flight of the ball, the wall, and the roof. Step three, the x values where the graph intersect is between 200 feet and 230 feet, which is outside the domain of the equation of the roof. So the baseball does not hit the roof. Okay, notice this is the graph of the quadratic equation. This is the graph of x is equal to 240. And the one that might be confusing you is the graph of the roof. Notice that it's, um, x intercept is 180, right? The y intercept was a negative 120, so that's way down there somewhere, right? But let me show you how you would come out with the 180. All right, remember this is the review on a review of finding the x and y intercepts. In this case, we find the x. We have that uh, y0, so we get 2 thirds x minus 120. We subtract our 120. All right. After we do that, we get 120 is equal to 2 thirds x. All right. We got to get rid of the 2 thirds by multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 2. Cancels out, cancels out. 
uh, two goes into two once, two goes into 120, 60, so three times 60 is 180.